Okay, how's everybody doing? We still awake? Everybody stand up. Up, 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 up. Everybody up. <laughs> hey, there we go. Let's wake up a little. Take a big breath in. Raise your hands over your head. Exhale it out through your mouth really loud. <sighs> okay, one more time. Come on. Inhale. Let it out. <sighs> Great. Okay. You may see. <laughs> I am going to talk today about creating alignment with core modeling. And this really um, is, is, was a great setup all day as people were talking about um, using your, your content to serve the visitors of your website, really thinking through your content that it's not an afterthought. Core modeling is one way for, that we can get there. So here's a lovely family. Whoops, that was good. Where are we? Okay. We have a growing family here, right? They are looking to buy a new house. So the first thing they do is pick out the paint colors, and then they pick out the curtains and all the furniture. Yes? No. No. First thing they do is figure out what their family needs. This is their first home. What features do they need? What do they need for the kids to grow up? What do they need for their own private space? They're not decorating the house before they pick out the house. They're figuring out what will function well for them. Okay. When we start by designing a home page, and an architecture, and then kind of work our way down, it's like picking out the color of the house before we know what it is we're doing. So core modeling is about taking the architecture and the layout and the design and putting it in its proper place, which is after we figure out exactly what it is we're trying to build. So, I have a lot of experience in a ton of different things that have nothing to do with each other. Um, so I work at Sleight of Hand Studios. Uh, we're a digital agency outside Washington, D.C. Um, so I've spent most of my career in tech. Um, I'm also a wine educator, and I'm also a yogi. And when you're a yogi, what you try to do is align things. You're aligning the body and then you're aligning what you're doing with the body with your breath. So what we're gonna do is talk about the core model as a method of alignment. Okay? What we're trying to do is align the business goals that we have for our website with the user tasks that need to be accomplished on that site. And we're trying to find that alignment, that crossover between those two things. The project then revolves around the core content. It doesn't revolve around what the home page looks like. It doesn't revolve around the design. It doesn't even revolve around the architecture that somebody has very handily lit handed you when you walked in the room. We all have those, those days where you starting a new project and someone says, this is what we want it to look like. We're going to try to back people up and start thinking about the most important pages on your website. And by doing this, we're going to create better content and we're going to create better architecture in the long run because we're going to understand the interaction between the content and the users, between the content and the business. We're going to drive our visitors to really highly optimized web pages. And what happens when they get to a highly optimized web page? They're going to read it, they're going to act on it, and then that is going to benefit the organization who owns that website through greater ROI. So increased ROI through increased conversions through more optimized web pages. So, if you have um, 
been to any of my other sessions on content strategy over the past few years, you always see this slide. Because this is what I preach. Everybody has to be involved in the project. So even though we're talking content, we've got social media people sitting here, we've got developers, we've got designers, we've got subject matter experts, SEO folks, architects. Why is everybody sitting here? So you're gonna walk into this meeting and all these people are gonna be here and everyone's like, I don't know why I should be in this meeting. You know, why, why am I here? Okay, what we want is stakeholders across all the disciplines to come together and to collaborate and with the development team okay, and brainstorm. What we want to talk about are the business goals here. We're doing our discovery. You cannot do a content redesign without doing a discovery. So the first part of our discovery is brainstorming on what your organization's overall goals are. What do we want for this website? Which is usually a little bit different than what is our organization doing in general. What is our goal for this particular website? And really think about prioritizing them, making them measurable, going down to sub goals. What are we really trying to accomplish? So we're doing this brainstorming activity with all of these people just to identify our business goals. So that's step one. Second brainstorming session, what do our visitors want? We can guess and we can assume and sometimes if you have a new site, you're doing a lot of guessing and assuming. But if you have an existing site, you've got metrics, you've got task surveys, you've got analytics, you can do a thorough content audit and you can figure out what is it that our audience needs to get accomplished because all four of these audiences have totally different needs. Okay? So we've got our business goals and we've got our audience objectives. What are the cores? At what point does the business goal and the user task align? So we're taking the same team of people and we're figuring out where this alignment is in our content. Okay? Do we have pages that align at least one business goal and at least one user task? Okay? So I've got a task and at least one go business goal and they come together, that's called a core. Okay? So this is our overlap and this is where you may or may not currently have a page that does this because you're thinking differently now. You're not thinking in terms of departments or products. You're thinking in terms of where are my visitors going and what do we need as an organization for them to do when they get there. Okay. So now we're going to take all these people who have been working on this, get them to do this alignment and then send them into a workshop and probably several sessions of a workshop because you can't do this for more than four hours at a time, okay? So you're gonna divide your group into teams of two people and they're gonna be from two different disciplines. So if you can match up a person who's a subject matter expert with a person who is a developer or a designer, that's a great opportunity right there for them to start to speak at the same, in the same way about the project. And each one is gonna work on the same core. So everyone in the room, if you have four teams, you're all working on exactly the same core. And you're gonna put these, these ideas down, and I'll show you how to do that, and then you're going to compare across teams. So you're gonna get some synergy between the teams. And anyone who has a vested interest in this website should be available to do this workshop. So here is the page. If you've ever seen anything about the core model, this is the form. You Google it, no matter who has written about the core model, this is the form. So the first thing we do is put down what is the core page that we're working on. And so in my example here, this is a project that we had done for um, an association 
where they wanted to build out a new website where people can come and um, identify uh, health education programs throughout the U.S. So the university crowdsourced the data from universities, and then students come in and look for, pro look for programs that align with what they want. So this is the program detail page that we're showing here. And the first thing we do, whoop, first thing we do is say, what is the user task for this core? So for this one, we want to look at a particular program offering. Then we document what's the business goal that this page is going to accomplish. So in this case, it's creating visibility for the universities that are participating in this website. Our next step, then, is to come up with the inward paths. How are we getting people to this page? Now, you might have existing metrics to support that. You might have a marketing strategy that's going to support that. But you can see for this particular page, the home page isn't taking me there. I'm getting it from a program search, maybe a Google search, uh, maybe some newsletters going out from the universities or Twitter feeds. So those are the inward paths to this content. Now we're starting to see architecture, right? We're starting to build architecture without those big flow diagrams, without site maps. The next thing we come up with is what are our forward paths? Where do we want to take them next? And we get a little selfish here because we are the organization who owns the website, so we get to decide where to take them next to fully satisfy additional business goals of ours. So here we're going to either let them contact the program, learn more about the program, oh, maybe learn about accreditation for the program, um, search for more programs if this one didn't meet their needs. Finally, we say, okay, we've kind of got a nice flow here. We know how we're getting to the page. We know where we're going from the page. So here's the start of our architecture. And now we're going to prioritize our content. And this could be a drawing. It could be a list of fields. It could pretty much be whatever each team comes up with. Because once they start collaborating, this is going to ch change a little bit. But you can see it's a small box because we're trying to say, hey, this is mobile first also. What are the most important things? Prioritize how you want this content displayed to your visitors. Okay? So now we've done the inward paths, the forward paths, we've got our core content, and we've thought mobile. So this is a thinking tool that has changed the way we have approached building a new website. We often want people to change. We say, how do I convince somebody? How do I go in the room and say, we need to follow this core modeling um, methodology? The way you change is to change yourself first. Get acclimated to this, read as much as you can about it, learn some more about it, and just start trying it out. If you change yourself, then you can change the world one website at a time. Thank you. Right, so if you're like me, you might not have gotten a picture of that diagram that she had up there. So I'm going to have her put the diagram up for one more second so you can take a picture. And then Scott DeLay is our closing keynote, and he just arrived, so we'll have him get started. But just in case you want to take a picture of that last diagram, um, Dory is also going to stay here for the um, reception. So if you have more questions for her, um, she'll be around and available. Good, how are you? Let's see if I can get this to come back up. There we go. One second. Hi, everybody. Uh, we'll get started in a minute. We are actually going to have an interactive session. It's late in the day. You've been having a lot of content coming at you. 
We only have a half hour, so we're gonna we're actually gonna interact. Sound good? We'll have some fun. We'll have some conversation going amongst people. You know, if you want to come up front, I mean, literally, it's 30 minutes. Just come on up. A little bit easy, a little bit easier to hear each other, um, and I won't have to yell. So, yeah, I encourage you to to come on up towards the front, and we'll get started in a minute.